Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the complete corporate liquidation. Specifically, we're going to be covering the built-in loss. This topic is covered in corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so yet. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 tax accounting and auditing lectures. It's all free. Please share them with others. If you like them, please click on the like button, put them in the playlist, let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from my lectures, it means others might benefit as well. This is my Instagram account. This is my Facebook account. And on my website, you can support the channel by making a donation. In the prior session, we looked at related party losses. Then we ask ourselves the following question. What if you have some assets, some junk that you don't need, and rather than selling the asset at a loss because you cannot deduct, what if you contribute this asset to the corporation? Simply put, what we are discussing here is contributing built-in loss. So simply put, the asset that you are contributing, it's already at a loss and you're, you're contributing it. And we talked about the benefit for you. It will increase your equity. It would also increase it and decrease the minority position if they are present. It also allowed the corporation corporation to sell it at a loss. It's a win-win situation. Then we talked about, well, Congress already know about this. And corporate losses, not gain, are, are this is this allowed on property, which is called disqualified. So this property, because it has a built-in loss, it's disqualified. Okay? If it's contributed in the past five years to the prior to the corporate liquidation. Now we're gonna go a little bit more into this rule and talk about what do we mean by built-in losses. So this is what we did in the prior in the prior session. In the prior session, we looked at losses that are related party losses, and we said we cannot we cannot take those. In this session, we're gonna focus on number two, okay? And in the following session, we'll cover number three and number four. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about the built in loss limitation. Simply put, you have a loss, but you cannot take it. So losses are disallowed on the distribution or sale of built in loss property, even if the distribution or sale involved unrelated party, even though you're going to sell them to somebody unrelated, okay, to somebody who's not related to the company, they don't own 50% plus, you would still those losses will be disallowed. How do we this? How do we define built in property losses? It's a property acquired in a section 351. So it's very important to know it's section 351. If section 351 is not there, the built-in losses do not apply or contribution to, to a capital transaction as part of a plan. So basically you are contributing this asset as part of your contribution. And the principal purpose of which is to recognize a loss by the liquidating corporation. And you are contributing this property and with the aim of eventually the corporation disposing of it at loss. So there is no business purpose for it. So transfer occurring, always transfer occurring within the past two years of adopting the plan are treated as acquired for tax avoidance plan. So any asset acquired, not acquired, contributed to the company in the past two years, basically they are flagged for the built-in loss limitation. Okay. Also, this pre this presumptive rule does not apply to the following situation. Now we said, you know, it's always if you if you contributed within the past two years. However, when there's a clear and substantial relationship between the property and the conduct of a corporation current and future business. If the asset has a, has a use, if you need a warehouse and you contributed a warehouse, if we need a vehicle like a truck and you contribute the vehicle, well, there is, there is a business use for it. If that exists, then this will not apply. Okay. When the property contributed in the first two years of the corporation existence, also this rule here will not apply because the, comp the corporation just started. And losses disallowed by this provision are limited to the built-in loss determined at the date when the property was acquired by the corporation. So the losses that we disallow is the built-in losses, and we're going to see what does that mean in a moment when we work an example. The basis step-down rule limit the built-in losses limitation reach. So you're going to see when we look at the base step-down rules limit, which we talked about in the prior chapter, I believe in chapter 18. So we're going to revisit this again, and it limit that the amount of losses that you can take. You can take some losses, but not all of it. So the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example. So in the current year, B company acquired two properties from the share from the shareholder in a transaction that qualify under section 351. What does that mean? It automatically trigger in your mind that we could have a built in loss. And if there's a built in loss at section 351, we could have a built in loss limitation. So here's what we contributed land basis of 100,000 fair market value of 50. There's a built in loss of 50,000 
securities basis of a 10,000 fair value of 35 we have a built-in gain we net them this is the net built-in built-in loss so the net built-in loss is 25,000 results in a step down basis of $75,000 in the land for Brown Corporation so simply put we're gonna look at the land with the basis now we're gonna reduce the basis of the land to 75 to 75,000 later in that year Brown adopted plan of liquidation and distribute the land to unrelated shareholder when the land is worth 30,000 now we distributed the land and we already know the land has a built-in loss but the fair value of the land just kept going down and now it's at 30,000 so how do we compute the loss how do we how do we compute the loss exactly well the proceeds we're going to be receiving is 30,000 this is the we're going to be receiving the fair market value the basis 75,000 remember the basis the built-in basis is 75,000 okay fair market value 30 basis 75 what is our total loss our total loss is 45 thousand total loss is 45,000 that's the loss realized now how much of that loss of the realized is actually recognized well what we have to understand is some of the losses occur after occurred after we contributed the asset remember the fair market value was 50 then it dropped down to 30 but that drop down in 30 that additional 20,000 occur after we contributed the asset okay what does that mean it means of the 45,000 laws realized, which is that's how much we realized by Brown on the distribution, 25,000 is, is disallowed by the built-in loss, and the remaining, the 20,000, is recognized. So notice of the 45,000, 20,000 happen after the contribution that's allowed, and 25,000 is not allowed because that's considered as prior to the contribution of the asset now let's change the example a little bit let's assume the fair market value rather than 50 it's 120 what does that mean it means we don't have a built-in loss now we have a gain and let's assume now we liquidated and we sold the property the fair market value of the property is 30,000 basis of a hundred thousand we have a loss of 70,000 now if we distribute this property to unrelated party in a liquidation that's fine we can count the loss of 70,000 so the loss will be recognized okay however if we distribute this property to a related party okay uh, um, under the related party loss limitation we cannot recognize any loss okay we cannot recognize any loss so the loss is disallowed although notice the decline happened after after we acquired the property so notice when we when they gave us the property it was a gain it does not matter when we distributed when we distribute the property we had a loss when you distribute the property we had a loss so if it's to a related party but well, it's a related party although the decline happened after it would still be disallowed okay so uh, so let's assume the fair market value is 120 uh, there is no built-in loss on the transfer. Brown will have a basis of 100,000. If the distribution to unrelated party, we would recognize the entire loss of 70,000. If the distribution to a related party, Brown cannot recognize any of the loss under the related party loss limitation because the property is a disqualified property. It's section 350, 351 within the past five years. When the distribution to a related party, the loss is disallowed, even though the decline happened after. Even though the decline happened after, it would still be a loss. Now let's talk about the presumption of tax avoidance purpose now what you did is you contributed an asset for the and we are making the presumption there is no business need for it to ta to avoid taxes let's see how this works cardinal corporation stock is held by two unrelated individual 60 percent by m and 40 percent by jack one year before cardinal liquidation m which is the majority shareholder majority it's a related party transfer a land with a basis of 150 fair market value of 100 so what does that mean well if we have a basis a fair market let's start with a fair market value if we have a fair market value of 100 and the basis of 150 we have a loss of 50,000 so we are contributing an asset with a built-in loss and equipment the equipment has a basis of 10 and fair market value of 70 so fair market value of 70 basis of 10 we have a gain of 60,000 notice when we net those out overall we have a net 
gain of 10,000. So we don't have a net built-in loss, we have a net gain. We have a net gain, okay? As there is no built-in loss on the transfer, Cardinal will have the basis, 150 in the land. So now we're gonna pick up the basis. So in the land, so the land will have a basis. The land will have a basis of 150, and obviously the equipment will have a basis of 10 because it's already a gain. In the liquidation, Cardinal distributed the land, and now the land has a fair market value of 90. So now we distribute the land. The land has a fair market value of 90. The basis is 150. What is our total realized loss? Hopefully you can do the math. The total realized loss is 60. Now, the total realized loss is obviously, you can see this, 60. Even though the distribution is, let's assume, to an unrelated party, the built-in loss of 50,000 is not recognized. So 60 is the total loss, 60 of the total loss, but we have a built-in loss right from the get-go of 50. Therefore, what we do, we're going to say, well, 50,000 cannot be counted, and what's left in the losses is 10,000. So the remaining losses, the remaining losses will be allowed, okay? So only a loss of 10,000 can be recognized. Now, instead, let's assume we distribute it to Man Manuel, who's a related party because he owns 60%, then th there we go, we stop right there. We say none of it is allowed because he's a 60% owner, okay? So hopefully you can follow this example. Assume that the land and equipment are transferred to Cardinal Corporation because a bank required the additional capital investment as a condition to make a loan to the corporation. Now what we do is we have a business purpose for the transfer. In that situation, all of the $60,000 is recognized if the land is distributed to Jack in a liquidation. Jack is what? Jack is not a related party. Jack is the 40% owner. If instead the land is distributed to Manuel, a related party, the entire loss is disallowed. Okay? So bear in mind, Jack is 40%, Manuel is 60%. Manuel is a related party, Jack is not. So if, we, if there is a business purpose, then we have to make that distinction between related party and non-related party. Let's take a look at this example. O Corporation stock is owned by Pedro and Petro, who are unrelated. Pedro and Petro each own 50% of the stock of the corporation. Now, before we proceed, to be a related party, you have to be 50% plus, okay? 50% plus. O has the following asset, none of which were acquired in Section 351 or a contribution to capital transaction. So these are assets are not Section 351, nor they are contributed to the company. And uh, that are distributed in complete liquidation. So cash is the fair market value, the same land, $200,000 basis, fair market value of 440. We have a gain of, we have a gain of 240 here. Equipment adjusted basis of 250, a loss of 90. This is before we look at the question, we can, we can, we have, we have that much information. Assume that the corporation distribute the land to Pedro and the cash and equipment to Petro. So the land, the land to one of them. So 440. So notice the distribution is 50% and 50%. 440 and the other two is 440. Determine the recognized, determine the corporation recognized gain or loss on the distribution of the land. Well, there's a gain. Good. There's a gain. We recognize the, the gain. There's no if and buts about it. We recognize the gain. Determine O recognize gain or loss for the distribution of the equipment. Now, notice the equipment has a loss. Actually, not the loss is 110 on the uh, on the equipment. Sorry, my math was wrong. 110. This is the loss. Okay. Now we're going to recognize the loss of 110. Okay. Why? Because this is a liquidating distribution. Liquidating distribution. Liquidating distribution means what? It means we are going to. Uh, in the absence of related party, in the absence of the uh, um, uh, in the absence of uh, related party, we can we can recognize the loss, and this asset was not Section 351, and was not a capital contribution. So notice they told us in the problem this asset here, both of them are not Section 351, and both of these shareholders are not related party. Okay, why? Because it has to be more than 50%. So two, two reasons. We're going to recognize the loss. We're going to recognize the gain. The gain should be easy. We always recognize the gain. Why do we recognize the loss? 
it's exactly 50%. Oops. It's exactly 50%. And the other reason is the are it's not disqualified asset. Not disqualified asset. It means not section 351 and it's not asset contributed to, uh, as a capital transaction. Let's take a look at this example. On January 4th, 2018, M Company acquired two properties from a shareholder solely in exchange of stocks in a transaction that qualifies under Section 351. Now we're looking at a transaction that is Section 351. The shareholder basis, the fair market value, and the built-in loss for each property are, are as follow. So property one, there's a gain. Property two, we have a loss. So overall, we have a built-in loss of 50000 M, uh, the company adopt a plan of liquidation later in the year and distribute property to, to a 30% shareholder, so it's not a related party, when the property is worth 350. Okay? Compute the company basis in property one and in property two as of January 4th, 2018. First, they want us the basis for the corporation. Well, for property one, it's pretty straightforward. Property one, there's a built-in gain. Well, if it's a built-in gain, we the basis transfer. So 300,000 is for property one. Property two, notice in property two, we have a loss. We have we have a built-in loss. So we have to do, we have to take this 50,000, the net loss, and reduce the property. So 525, we have to reduce 525 by 50,000, the net loss. Therefore, the basis in the property for the corporation for, for property two, is 475 is my if my math is right and it should be right 475 okay this is this is the basis in property two now compute the company realized and recognized loss on liquidating distribution of property two so property one is pretty straightforward let's look at property two why property two is why are they looking for property two because it has because it has a built-in loss, okay? So first, let's determine the realized loss. Before you proceed, just what's my realized loss, and then you determine how much am I gonna recognize or not. Well, if my basis is 475, that's my basis, 475, and the value is 350, so four, uh, four well, let's start with the value, 350 minus 475 is my basis, so I have a realized loss, so my loss is 125, and that's my realized loss. Now, I have to be very careful here in how much loss am I going to recognize, okay? Because there was a built-in loss to start with, all right? Now, remember, the fair market value of acquisition was 400,000, okay? And we stepped down, so the fair value was 400,000, and we compared the 400,000 to 475. So there was an existing loss, okay, an existing loss of 75,000. So we say we say 400,000, the fair value when asset was contributed, minus the adjusted basis of 475. The existing loss that we contributed was 75,000. Now, obviously, we have additional losses because now our losses is 125. Well, well, if we have additional losses of 50,000, those are the losses that we are going to we are going to recognize. Why? Because 125 is the total of which 75 existed prior, therefore the additional 50 happened after. Now we can take the additional 50 and the reason we can take the additional 50 recognize the additional 50 because we distributed the property to a 30% shareholder. That's very important. Okay? Now if we distribute the property to somebody with 50 plus 50% 50 plus then none of it none of it will be none of it will be recognized so simply put the total loss is 125 75 is not recognized and 50 is recognized 50 is recognized if you have any questions any comments about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.